Good afternoon. Welcome to the press conference of the International Observers. My name is Roberto Montel. I work for the OSC Parliamentary Assembly. Um, we have with us today Mr. Pizzula, who is the head of the OSC Parliamentary Assembly delegation and leader of the OSC Short Term Observers. Mr. Cox, who is the head of the Parliamentary Assembly delegation of the Council of Europe, and Ambassador Tagliavini, who is the head of the ODM mission here. Uh, we will proceed in this way. I will first give the floor to Mr. Cox, who will deliver the agreed statement. Then I will give the floor to Mr. Pizzula, who will deliver the statement on behalf of the OSC. And then I will give the floor to Ambassador Tagliavini, who will uh, make uh, some remarks on the work of the uh, audio mission. After the statement and the remarks, we will open the floor for questions. There will be floating uh, microphones. We will only take questions from journalists, of course. And um, after the press conference, uh, the um, statement uh, will be available outside this room in Russian and English copies. Uh, so without further ado, I give the floor to Mr. Cox to deliver the agreed statement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Welcome. Uh, after having observed your presidential elections, we now will tell you uh, our preliminary findings and uh, conclusions. We means OSCE ODIR, OSCE Parliamentary Assembly and the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. We operated in a joint uh, observation mission and I thank both of my colleagues for the excellent cooperation. Thank you very much. I will now read out a summary of our joint conclusion and then give the floor to the colleagues. On uh, March 4, five candidates stood in the presidential election. Although all contestants were able to campaign unhindered, the conditions for the campaign were clearly skewed in favor of one candidate. Also overly restrictive candidate registration requirements limited genuine competition. While all candidates had access to media, only one candidate the current Prime Minister was given clear advantage in the coverage. State resources were mobilized at a regional level in his support. The election campaign was characterized by continuing and generally unobstructed large-scale protests over allegations of fraud from the 2011 State Duma elections. Demands for honest elections by citizens and candidates led to greater involvement in observation efforts to enhance the integrity of the process. On election day, observers assessed voting overall uh, positively. However, the process deteriorated during the count due to procedural irregularities. The start of the electoral campaign was marked by large-scale, peaceful, countrywide demonstrations calling for fair elections. The authorities allowed such protests to take place without undue interference in line with their commitment to freedom of assembly. In response to the protest, President Medvedev proposed new laws to the State Duma to modify and simplify registration of political parties and candidates in the future. The presidential campaign was marked by significant civic engagement, including increased focus on election observation. Despite the challenge of organizing elections for nearly 110 million voters residing in a territory comprising nine time zones, the administrative preparations for the presidential election proceeded efficiently. There was, however, a general lack of confidence among many interlocutors in the independence of the election officials at all levels. As said, on election day, voting was assessed positively overall. However, procedural irregularities and some limited instances of illegal activities were observed. The process deteriorated during the count, which was assessed negatively in nearly one-third of the polling stations observed due to procedural irregularities. During the tabulation, observers reported that in some cases the data entry process was poorly organized and lacked transparency. Let me conclude by saying this. The Russian presidential election showed a clear winner with an absolute majority avoiding a second round. However, voters' choice was limited 
electoral competition lacked fairness and an impartial referee was missing. Due to increased citizens' awareness and involvement, elections were more lively, better managed, and more seriously observed, whereas structural improvements in electoral regulation were proposed to Parliament, but not yet passed. Thank you very much. Could I now ask Mr. Pizzola to continue? Thank you so much, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me start with both. Uh, I'm pleased to stand here with you in Moscow as well to once again said how pleased I am with cooperation with my dear colleagues, uh, Madam Tellerini and Mr. Cox. Thank you so much for that cooperation. But let me uh, echo what my colleague has presented to you in agreed statement of international observers and add some short remarks on behalf, behalf of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. These elections was characterized by a number of the problems from the very beginning. The point of election is that their outcome should be uncertain. This was not the case in Russia. The biggest problem with this election is that there was no real competition. It was not a level playing field and abuse executive power, as well as the inappropriate use of administrative resources, ensured that ultimate winner of the election was never in doubt. The broadcast media was clearly biased in favor of one candidate and did not provide fair coverage of the other candidates. The signature requirements to register candidates for presidential elections in Russia do not allow for a wide participation of all interested candidates and parties. In conclusion, we would like to underline that according to our assessment, these elections were unfair despite some innovations in election process and unhindered possibilities for campaigning. We hope that the Russian authorities engage more energetically in complying with the OSC commitments and expect that they will take these remarks as an incentive to engage in a process of electoral reform, thus allowing a genuine competition in the future elections. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's from an argument program last Thank you. As you know, our four-year election observation mission has been in the country for six weeks now and has monitored all stages of the election process. Elections are not a one-day event. Every election is a process involving many aspects and actors. Our preliminary conclusions on the presidential election in Russia are reflected in this joint statement that we are jointly presenting here. In this election, we noted that candidates could not compete on an equal footing. This was mainly due to unequal access to the media and to the misuse of state resources. Also, candidate registration requirements seemed excessively onerous and therefore limited competition. In response to widespread allegations of violations during the Duma elections, the authorities have undertaken some efforts to improve transparency, including through transparent ballot boxes and the installation of web cameras in over 90,000 polling stations. These are positive steps. However, they, they turned out to be insufficient so far to dispel widespread mistrust in the integrity of the election process. This needs to be addressed. At the first step now, all allegations of electoral violations need to be thoroughly investigated. In a very encouraging development, we have seen a great number of citizens taking part as a, in observing the election. I was impressed by the commitment and involvement of the observers I saw in the different polling stations I visited yesterday. 
the active involvement of citizens can be a powerful vehicle for increasing confidence in future elections. Let me conclude by stressing that our assessment is preliminary. We will remain in the country to follow the tabulation process as well as the way complaints and appeals are handled. This will form an important part of our overall assessment. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Ambassador. We now open the floor for questions. Please state your name and the media organization you work for. Hello. Jill Dory from CNN. Mr. Cox, I wanted to ask you if I understood correctly, you said at one-third of the polling stations there were irregularities. What were the major irregularities that you saw? If you allow, I pass this question to my colleague, Tadja Vini, who took care for the registration of all our observers. Heidi? Thank you. As you know, we based our observations on accounts that come from our observers, forms that are filled in. We have counted, we have observed the counts in 98 polling stations, and one-third in these polling stations was assessed as bad and very bad. So that's the basis. Observers reported that members of the polling, of the electoral commissions, did not always follow the correct procedures, and there were also instances of ballot box stuffing. So in one-third overall, procedural questions were not followed and have created tension. And if I may add, we observed elections in over 1,000 polling stations throughout the day and the count. Susanne Lenewaard from Greenland Citizens. What do you think should happen next in Russia? I think during the campaign, a lot of questions were asked, a lot of demands were made, and a lot of promises were also made. For example, the promise to improve, to simplify, and to simplify and modify the process of registration of political parties and presidential candidates. That is for sure the first thing that the State Duma should finish. The laws are there already in their first reading, but they should be completed as soon as possible. That is one. The second thing that should happen is that Russia should get an impartial referee. Without an impartial referee in elections, you cannot play the game that we call democracy. There is, as Ambassador Tajavini said, there is a large mistrust in the election committees from the lower level to the higher level and to the highest level. That is the second thing that has to be done. And the third thing is that Russia should be proud on the fact that there were so many observers, so active this time, not chewing gum or drinking Coca-Cola or listening to the latest songs on their iPhones, but really observing the elections. That too caused that sometimes the counting lasted longer than before. But that is not a problem. That is a good sign. I think Russia should cherish all these new people who got involved in the political process, who want to take part in the political process, and who have only one clear demand. Let us have free and fair elections. It is not that difficult. You cast your vote, your vote is counted, and you decide who got it, who is the winner, and who is not the winner. That are the three main lessons I think Russia should learn from this election. And Madam Tajavini? Maybe I could just add to that, as it corresponds to the methodology of election observation missions. Our mission will come up with a final report in some two months, and this final report includes recommendations, recommendations which usually are discussed with the authorities, the relevant bodies of the country. So I think this is also one of the further steps that we envisage. Thank you. Mark Phillips of CBS News. In an impartial election, what would you want the outcome to be? Do you think that the results will be different than they are today? I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results will be different than they are today. I think that the results
Yeah, I guess we all agree that we are not talking about ideal world, but the second best, maybe, maybe, yes. Uh, I think we have been clear that these uh, elections uh, did not meet important democratic commitments, but it's not up to OSC and other organizations to place any label on the winners and the losers of these uh, elections. We are not here to comment candidates or outcome, but campaign, legislation, procedures, access to medias. Are they in compliance with agreed international standards or not? And we uh, find out that in many aspects, uh, Russia commitments to all these standards remain unfinished. It's our general assessment. Nicholas Pickle from the Moscow Times. Uh, some of us were at, a, at an event with uh, Alexei Navalny and Gary um, Kasparov last night. And early in the morning they said the elections have shown that this country is ruled by an illegitimate president, by an illegitimate parliament, and practically both have usurped power. I understand the answer that you have just given about the framework of your work, but what do you think this will mean for the future uh, political process in this country? Thank you very much. If we knew, knew that, Nicholas, we would be rich. So what we only can say, what are the lessons learned from these elections according to us? And I refer to it, uh, Madame Tagliavini uh, uh, spoke about it, and Mr. Pisla spoke, spoke about it. Uh, and of course, it's entirely right of everybody to comment on the elections. Mr. Navalny, Mr. Kasparov, and Mr. Putin, they are all entitled to comment. But we like to stick to the factual uh, things that we observe, and then we say that these elections uh, lacked an equal competition, lacked an impartial referee, uh, and on the other hand, were marked by a, a far greater uh, civic involvement and a great attitude of so many observers. Yes, I want to add just one, just one sentence, of course, adding that what just Mr. Cox uh, had said. We are not here to take a side. I want to be absolutely clear. We are here to observe uh, and monitor process. And, of course, what will happen in the future, near future, in the Russia is up to people and their elected leadership, and, of course, the opposition. Please. Uh, I, uh, Ray Deliberty, my question is redirected to Mr. Cox. In January, when the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe uh, decided not to have urgent debates after Russia Duma's elections, it was uh, said that if there will be the same level of fraud in, in present elections it will be notified that you will have urgent debates. Is it that level that you will have uh, urgent debates or do you think it will be rather It is not up to me, uh, uh, Danilo, to de decide on uh on what the Assembly uh, should do or should not do. Uh, it is clear that uh, we are still working, as uh, Ambassador Yavini said, on the results of election day. Until now, it, it, it looks uh, at least slightly better than in the, in, in, in the State Duma elections, that that is progress, but we will report on that. That will be an element to decide whether or not to have an urgent debate in Strasbourg in, 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 in April. Uh, another thing that our assembly possibly might do is to conclude that there were so many promises made, so many demands are, uh, made and so many questions asked that it's worthwhile to come back to your country in, in, in a short notice, I say uh, within a month before the, 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 the next uh, part session of, uh, of our assembly in Strasbourg uh, in order to make it possible to decide whether or not to have an urgent debate. Anyhow, we will debate Russia, Russia elections in April part session and we will debate developments in Russia in, um, uh, in September when the monitoring uh, uh, report will be presented but it's not now up to me I'm the member of the presidential committee but we have so many presidents and we have so many important people there, they all will, will take uh, part in the decision so I cannot answer the question but we will surely talk about uh, Russia, Russia elections in April Thank you Anastasia Lopin was very precious there is 
Our new vision has been here for six months, or six weeks. Our heavy metal expectation, like what have you seen during the election day? Like have you expected that during your mission before? And the second question is, are uh, almost no cases uh, in the courts after the June election more uh, satisfied? Do you expect something better will happen after this election? Thank you. Yes. As an election observation mission, we don't come here with expectation, except for the standards that we are actually trying to find compliance with. Um, we came with a standard um, election observation mission that looks into the whole framework around um, the, in all aspects around uh, the election, pre-election campaign, the legal framework, um, and um, the expectations part is actually our assessment has nothing to do with expectation. It is an observation and it's also not um, a political assessment of what we um, are going to observe. It is rather a technical assessment whether all the aspects of the electoral process um, are in compliance with Copenhagen um, standards and with international commitments and also with national legislation. So in as far we, we can't really speak about expectations. And as I, I mentioned before, when we establish our final report, all our observation will in some way um, end up in recommendations and they will be further discussed with the host country. I would, like in, uh, I would like just to add that uh, uh, electoral monitoring uh, system is not about wishful thinking. It's just even better to come to the country before you are observing elections without any prejudices. What you need to do is to check to whether uh, standards in the country are complied with international standards. As I already said, the, uh, the, ci the civic engagement in these elections really did matter. Uh, it led, for example, in our opinion, to uh, the, the substantial proposals of Mr. Medvedev to, to, to change, to, to simplify uh, and modify uh, the, the rules on party registration and presidential candidates registration. If that would become reality in Russia, that would be a big step forward. That is one. Second, thanks to the civic movement uh, and thanks to the fact that so many people volunteered, many for the first time, to be observer in these elections, the elections were observed in a better way. Uh, the reaction of, uh, of uh, the government of the Russian Federation to install all these 200,000 web cameras was a reaction to uh, that uh, civic uh, movement and that, that called for transparency and, and uh, fair elections. And furthermore, I think that the voters in Russia were influenced by the protest that they have seen on the television screen, as television is here, the main instrument of communication. It has become clear, I think, to many uh, uh, Russian voters that something was happening, some demands were made, and something had to change. So, altogether, uh, we should uh, say that uh, uh, this uh, uh, movement uh, had a substantial influence on the electoral campaign, uh, we cannot comment whether it had an influence on the results of the, of the, uh, the elections. Thank you. Uh, my name is Christian Hirsch uh, from the German newspaper, the and I have a question to uh, Mr. Fox again. I remember last time you were here for the December elections, there were problems with uh, cooperation with the Central Electoral Committee and meetings with Mr. Schubert, the current council. I wanted to ask you whether this time it was different, how many meetings were there Mr. Chulov, did they go well? And as a follow-up question, Mr. Chulov practically accused the inter of some international observers of espionage. He said there is a suspiciously high interest of international observers towards military objects and objects in border areas. Can you comment on that? First, we are not alien. Uh, we are at home here in Russia because Russia is the biggest member state of both the OSCE and the Council of Europe. 
So we cannot be meant by Mr. Turov's uh, idea about uh, uh, what people are doing here in this country. That is one. Second, the first time, I, uh, last time I said to Mr. Turov, I met him several times in, since December, that is progress. Last time I said to him, Mr. Turov, first you did not want to meet me, and now you don't want to leave me, because he spent so much time in explaining uh, all things that he done. And the positive news is that also the CEC took in account uh, several of the, uh, the recommendations that uh, we, as, as, as an uh, election observation mission, made. That is progress. And he, in the last meeting, uh, last Thursday, he admitted that he took into account our practical observations and, 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 and recommendations. He did not agree with our political recommendations, but we still are trying to identify what our political recommendations were. As Madam Tariyavini said, we don't make political recommendations. Uh, the atmosphere is far better. The first uh, meeting I would not uh, propose to, to, to be the, the, the standard because my mother at least learned me how to behave in, in, in another way. But since then, our meetings are uh, good. They are professional. Mr. Turov knows what we are and knows what we have to do, that we are committed to standards, standards to which the Russian Federation should, uh, should, should apply. And I think we still differ on our conclusion that this great country misses an impartial referee and you need an impartial referee in order to play the game that's called democracy. Uh, let us hope that also the, the, the election observation authorities will learn lessons out of this, uh, uh, of, of this campaign and out of our report. But again, that is up to the Mr. Turov and his whole team. And to be clear, we are not focusing on a person, we are focusing on the electoral system as such and the, and, and the role of the electoral committees at all levels, as I said. Thank you. Please. James from the Irish Times, Ireland. Ambassador Italia Vindi mentioned that one third of the <coughs> counts uh, were either evaluated as either bad or very bad. Was there an even spread of this throughout the country or these? concentrated then in particular geographical areas. And also, you didn't mention anything about difficulties of access to the protocols or the tampering with the protocols. Was this as bad as the last time in the 70s? Thank you for the question. Um, yes, indeed, I meant 98 um, observations of the counting. And this means 98 observations by our observers throughout the country. These are the forms we received with reports and with assessments. And they were assessed as bad. And as one third of these 98 were assessed as bad and very bad. Um, and the rest of the question? I want to know where the irregular, irregularities were the bad and very bad uh, decisions spread evenly throughout the country or were they geographically concentrated? The other part of the question was that you didn't mention anything about difficulties with the protocol and where they You know that one of the measures or one of the praises for the introduction of the web camera um, was that the protocol eventually should be showed to one of the web cameras and read out loudly in front of the camera. And this is an aspect in which we have practically no information so far, whether this worked well or did not work at all. Um, what we have rather noted is that when we say bad or very bad in the counting, that there were procedural difficulties, that there were unrest in polling stations. Um, it took a long time to count. Observers indicated, as I saw it in polling stations, um, in observers indicated procedural mistakes, filed a complaint, and with that, uh, the whole process um, slowed down, of course, and it became increasingly difficult to continue the orderly process of counting. So there were several procedural issues, such as mobile ballot box um, not being in the polling station all the time, um, and so on. 
Thank you. Jennifer Rankin from Reuters. Do you have any estimates on how the results would have been different if, uh, if free and fair procedures would have been uh, followed, any numerical estimates? And how would you characterize these elections compared to the parliamentary elections? Are they the same or, or worse? Uh, we, we cannot uh, uh, tell you how the results would have been if, because you never can answer that, that question. Uh, to be honest, it does not really matter to us. Even if the, the actual candidate did not win these elections, the, the, the harassment of uh, uh, the, the fair level, uh, level playing field would be as serious as it is. So it, it's not a question who wins the election. The question is how you are uh, dealing and winning, uh, winning uh, e elections. The second part of your question was? How would you compare these elections to the parliamentary elections last year? We do not compare elections because these were parliamentary elections and this is the presidential elections, although in our statement you heard that there was an effect of the, the, the parliamentary uh, elections on the movement that started after the 4th of December in this country and in answer to the other gentleman uh, uh, I said that that, that lead uh, to improvement or at least changes in the electoral process. Now, Mr. Fitzman. I would like to add uh, something to, on, your, on your question. It's, uh, it wouldn't be possible for the OSC statistic uh, to determine an exact percentage uh, of votes steaming directly from acts of fraud or the violence or provisions. And we are about to, if uh, register such a deeds and a report such a deeds. But it's almost impossible to count out what is the pertinence of such a stolen votes during such a violent procedures. Thank you. The lady. Yeah. The lady Eman from Radio 24 Sydney. Uh, um, when we talked last time, Mrs. Tagheri, about the parliamentary elections, as you do now, you, that time you stress that you are talking about observations. Now, when we are talking about the presidential elections, it seems in my ears that, as if it is really talking about the elections as being unfair. Is it a, hard, a harsh criticism this time then? I don't quite understand your comment. When I talked to you last time, you, could, you, wouldn't, you said that the OIC is never criticizing elections, you are just observing. This time, are you now criticizing, saying it's unfair, or is it just observations? Maybe I can just describe what we are doing usually. What we are doing is we observe an electoral process and several aspects that are related to an electoral process. And we give an assessment as to the compliance with the commitment. And you will find this um, assessment in our preliminary statement, at the preliminary stage. But of course we have made a number of comments uh, today in which we qualified what could be said at this stage on the presidential election. Um, when we said that there is an unfair, what an un unequal or uneven playing field. Not all candidates had the same access. There was use of uh, office and administrative resources. Candidates that were not registered had difficulties um, in getting registered. And we have described this a little bit. I don't really see what you want to, what you want us to say. To add one, one, one thing, to, to clarify, we are here at the invitation of the State Duma. The State Duma asked us uh, to observe these elections and then to, uh, to conclude on our findings and uh, conclusions. It's up to the authorities here, it's up to the citizens of Russia to deal with uh, uh, our conclusions and our, our uh, findings. But as said, we are not an alien uh, power. Uh, uh, to tell you uh, uh, one thing, we met, uh, for example, recently met the new speaker of the State Duma, and he said that he was uh, uh, pleased with our report on the State Duma elections. Um, so I hope that uh, he too will say after this, uh, after we have produced our, uh, our definite uh, uh, reports, that he also will be pleased with the reports on the presidential elections. But it's up to them. We are here to to observe and then to comment and then to advise what one could do.
try to be more precise. We identify where uh, 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 commitments are not met and where improvements could be made. So in, instead of saying free and fair or not free and fair, we identify a limited voter, voter's choice, a lack of, uh, uh, of, of uh, fairness in, in, in the competition, uh, the, uh, the missing of an impartial referee. These are more clear and concrete uh, uh, identification of what, uh, what, what we observed and where the authorities, the, the State Duma, the President, the new government, could act. And then we can see whether or not they take our uh, conclusions and advice into, in, in, into consideration. Yes, I can only repeat what I said on the beginning, of course, that I estimate that these uh, elections were unfair despite some innovations, but also uh, would like to say that it's a high time that we need to find maybe some new language in attempt to describe elections, uh, not only uh, with uh, presidential parliamentarians, but uh, uh, between different level of the elections. So I think that we need to be more sophisticated when uh, describing situations like this. I would like to come back to the, the vote of people outside their own uh, places of residence. Uh, do you have uh, an assessment? I understand that you will remain here to study this, this uh, subject, but uh, I wonder whether you have uh, an assessment of uh, whether you control the, the, the general amount of uh, voters, of whether there can be tricky, uh, tricky deals with people who 
uh, register in one place and vote in another, who are taken to vote, uh, to close the uh, uh, polling stations. All these, these things, is that a new phenomenon? Or uh, um, I, want to, I would like to, to, you to share some of the information you already have on that yeah. subject. Yeah. Uh, and, and then we'll take one more question and then we'll close it. Two more questions. The lady, the lady there. Um, so we'll take one question and then we'll answer them together. Hi. Answer that question. No, no, but let's take some questions. Or, 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 they were not free and they were not fair. Are these elections free and fair, or they are not free and fair? They do not compare elections. Every, ex every election is a very specific um, issue. We would not have expected in December that this election would go exactly as it went um, this time that there would be introduction of new measures, that there would be a mobilization of the civil society, that there would be um, a high turnout of observers. That was all new. So it's just not to classify, uh, give sort of a pattern of adjectives to um, an election in different contexts, um, to be more specific. That's why we... That's why I would not even argue about the case in Kazakhstan. I know nothing about it. Thank you, Ambassador. Would you answer to my question? Yes. You must answer. These elections were free and fair. Please. Hello. Hello. Roman Vendring, the Dutch Republic in Germany. Um, you just given us an assessment of general situation in Russia, but Russia is very big and the situation was not the same in all regions. So the question is. Could you please specify about Moscow, how was the election here, was it free and fair? In this big city with yeah. many millions of people, and uh, in what regions of Russia uh, did you uh, monitor more, most irregularities? Thank you. Sorry, you didn't answer to my questions. Why are you answering to other questions that came afterwards? I think your, your question was already implied in the first question that you asked, but Basu uh, Valerini will try to Let call. Let me first um, come to the question. Of course, we did um, monitor throughout the country, and our reports, our forms that were filled in come from throughout the country. And when I say throughout the country, it's 40 long-term observers um, deployed in various areas from the Far East to the Far East, um, West um, and the South with a, a number of teams, we, I have to say we were limited this time, we have 270 short-term observers in all, that's not much for such a big country. <coughs> and our accounts here are <coughs> coming from all the observations in such parameters of counting, um, ballot boxes and so on. Um, but as a general remark, I could say that the campaign was definitely different than in Moscow, than in the rest of the country. Um, and uh, I can only speak for what I observed yesterday here in Moscow, where we saw this, where we saw really quite interesting um, things going on while the count should have gone on. Um, we can't yet say right now from which places we have these reports of um, irregularity. This is not, we are not yet in that stage. But the reports would, in my opinion, cover the country. But it were even seen um, in Moscow. We saw in Moscow also difficulties, procedural problems on the counting, on the filling in of the protocol and on the tabulation and on the introduction of the protocols into gas delivery system into this electronic collection system. So um, I, can't make, I can make a difference on how the campaign went in Moscow and in the rest of the country and there we can clearly say that 
most of the activities we could observe in Moscow, mobilization we could observe in Moscow, despite the fact that we have also seen a number of demonstrations throughout the country up to a certain moment. But the campaign was visible only in Moscow, basically. In the rest of the country, it was hardly visible. To add one, one remark, we are now uh, uh, not, not 24 hours after the, the, the polling stations closed. I think we are already rather concrete with our preliminary findings and preliminary conclusions. But you should give us the time to really uh, take into account all reports that we will get. And as said, uh, there will be a, 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 a report of OCE ODIR on all the reports that we got. There will be a, a report and a debate in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. The OCE Parliamentary Assembly will deal with the matter, and I hope you will be interested in these reports as well. These are preliminary findings, these are preliminary conclusions, and we should uh, be uh, uh, not too eager to know everything between in, in, in 24 hours after the closure of the polling station. That would not uh, be uh, fair to all these people who participated in this, uh, this uh, uh, election. Thank you very much. We close here the press conference and the copies of the statement are available outside. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Well.